Good morning. We'd like to thank you for joining the Gabelli Funds live webcast series. Today, we're joined by the Gabelli Funds Convertible Securities team to discuss how investors can find protection from uncertain market conditions and volatility using convertible securities. Portfolio manager of the Teton Convertible Securities Fund, James Dinsmore, will take you through what the team has been seeing recently in the convertibles market and take time to field your questions. I'd like to now turn the call over to James. Thanks, Chris. Um... Oh, here we go. All right, <clears throat> here we are. Um, so this is our team. This is our, our team. We've been together now. Um, Tom, Jane, and I, uh, I've been with the team since 2004. And Tom and Jane have um, been running converts together since the 90s, Tom since the 80s. Uh, so we have, we have a long track record in this space. Um, we joined Gabelli in 2015, and we've been managing the Teton Convertible Securities Fund since 2016, um, but we have been exclusively focused on convertible securities for uh, many years and over through multiple market cycles and through multiple market downturns. Um, so we feel uh, particularly um, comfortable and confident uh, as we look at the current market environment, uh, what, we're, what we're looking at now. So if we move on to um, the next slide, uh, why allocate to the Teton Convertible Securities Fund? So we look at um, our performance uh, over over long time horizons, um, one of the things that we've always talked about with convertibles is that convertibles are uh, reduced volatility equity investments. And so, um, one of the things that that we think you'll see over over time, um, current market notwithstanding, is that um, over the three year period, uh, if you look at our, our returns and our stand, and our volatility and our sharp ratio. Um, you can see that we've we've outperformed uh, certainly on in, in performance relative to um, the CWB, which is the ETF in convertibles, and also just the broader market indices. If you look at the S and P 500 or the Russell 2000, which um, we think probably some sort of blend of those two uh, indices is probably a, a, a better representation of what um, converts or sort of the equities that we're looking at uh, in the convertible space, um, you can see that we've we've greatly outperformed certainly the Russell 2000 um, with half the volatility um, over over longer time horizon. So one of the things that converts allow for it's it's allows you to invest in an equity gain equity exposure while reducing volatility in a client's portfolio. Um, this sort of allows you to stay invested in equity markets. Um, but taking taking down the risk a little bit, and um, one of the things that we've we've long held and and we're sort of seeing uh, firsthand over the last few weeks is that owning a bond fund and an equity fund does not replicate convertibles. So you know having trying to offset exposure is simply not the same thing that convertibles are doing. Convertibles are taking equity up in the capital structure. You're 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 moving up the capital structure. You're picking up income. You're picking up. Uh, you have a maturity. Um, so these things are these things allow us to to sort of outperform over over the long term, um, because you're getting both yield and capital appreciation from the same structure. Um, sometimes these uh, the pricing, as we've seen in the last few weeks, gets a little dislocated. But that I think only makes convertibles that much more attractive because we're now seeing we're seeing bonds that are trading towards bond floor and are much more fixed income like in their structure where we're picking up significant yields. Um, but over time, we think as, as the market sort of gets some more clarity as to where things are going looking forward, um, you'll be able to participate in significant upside from here. So um, it's a way of, of re investing in equities at a time when equities are uncertain um, with reduced volatility. Uh, so Chris, we can move on to the next slide. Uh, so this is sort of a breakdown of where we stand and where where our, uh, our fund looks like looks like today. Um, like I said, obviously we all know the dislocation in the market, so uh, we've seen a significant increase in our current yield um, and our yield to optimal, uh, which is um, sort of a, a way that we look at converts, where you're either you're you're either getting the current yield of of a a bond if it's above par, or you're getting a yield to maturity or a yield to put if there's a put on the bond um, if it's below par. So uh, our yield to optimal in that case, for all intents and purposes for our portfolio, it's yield to maturity is 5.4% currently. Um, 
our average bond price, which has come down fairly significantly over the last few weeks, um, is down to 93. Um, so here we're sitting in a situation where we have an average maturity of five years and a 93% bond price. So over time, we're expecting that our, our portfolio, the, the holdings in our portfolio are going to accrete to par, much like, a, much like you would expect in a bond fund, but we have significant equity exposure uh, currently with a 51 delta, um, where we're going to see at least half of um, any equity upside from here. And I think given some of the dislocations, um, you know, we talk a little bit about sort of a credit delta where uh, these companies are trading at levels where you're not expecting them to trade. Um, and once people feel more confident that the credit is not actually going to zero, uh, you'll see a little bit bump to that delta uh, in addition to, so it'll be more than just the 51%. Um, so I think it's a, it's a fairly attractive portfolio. It's fairly well diversified uh, across the broader industries. Um, there's been a significant focus in the last few years in issuance in the convertible space in information technology and healthcare, specifically software and information technology. Uh, I think this is a really great opportunity for us going forward because um, we're seeing issues where, you know, these, these companies have great balance sheets. This is the only debt on their balance sheet. We're not concerned about the credit of, of these companies in, in this time of dislocation. Um, it's a great recurring revenue model with, with significant growth. And um, I think a lot of them are, are enabling what we're all doing today, you know, whether it's uh, video conferencing or working remotely, um, using our work phones at home, like Ring Central and things like that. Um, these, are, these are companies that will, I think, over the next few months come to have, the users of these companies will, will be very appreciative of them and will see that they need to have this. This is a, a core business use case and um, the recurring revenues of, uh, that they currently have are going to continue going forward. We're gonna to continue to see growth in them from you know, those of us that don't have the opportunity to, to use this technology while we're working remotely. Um, we'll see some of the benefits of it. So I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of converts out there in, in the information technology space, in the healthcare space that are, are trading at such levels that they're incredibly attractive right now. Um, so I think our, our portfolio is, is well exposed to, um, to, to, to do well from here looking forward. Um, so Chris, if you could slide, so then if you can go to the next slide. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about is the importance of active management and converts. So, um, we know that there's a lot of people out there who have looked at the Barclays ETF and convert CWB. Um, we've found over time that, that the performance of CWB does not necessarily reflect um, what you should expect in converts. And what you should expect in converts is, is asymmetrical returns uh, where you're participating in more equity upside than downside. And um, what's happened over the years is that CWB gets very equity sensitive at market tops or as the market moves higher, it gets incredibly equity sensitive. Um, and it's usually driven by a handful of names. Um, so in the past, uh, in past years, it's been driven by names like NVIDIA and Alibaba where half, literally half of the performance of the CWB in a given year was attributable to a single name. Um, we were seeing the same thing in Tesla uh, this year. Uh, year to date through the top, um, through through February 19th of 2020, Tesla had uh, contributed 348 bips to CWB's performance. Um, that was, uh, CWB was up about 800 bips at the time. So almost half of the performance was attributable to a single name, which um, as we've seen has, has uh, skyrocketed through the first month and a half and, and has crashed through the last, uh, the last bit along with the rest of the equity market. So it's, it's, you know, 348 with 41 bips of, of performance in CWB um, was driven by Tesla. And um, so it's just, you're seeing more volatility in the ETF than you should be seeing in, um, in the convert space in general. And that's just because as positions get larger and larger in the ETF, they, they inherently drive more, uh, more of the performance. And the way that that happens and converts is that they become more equity sensitive. Um, so you're not seeing the asymmetrical returns that we like to see. Um, 
so I think that's you know that's a real highlight that we want to we want to highlight uh, the difference between us and and just a, a passive ETF. I think active and active investing in converts is very important, especially at a time like today. Um, we're seeing we're seeing many converts that have traded significantly lower, um, that are are massive opportunities here, and um, you know certainly they're now suddenly less of CWB. Um, they're they're a lot lesser weighting in CWB than they than we might want them to be if we're looking at at uh, mispriced opportunities. So I think active management is incredibly important here in the convert space. Uh, Chris, if you can go to the next slide. So one of the things we want to talk about is um, how converts perform relative to other equity substitutes um, in in downturns uh, and how they bounce back. So um, if you look at this slide, um, there's there's a bunch of numbers here, but um, some of the highlights that I really want to want to hit on are if you look at at e in each line, it's there's a line that shows how much we were down, and then how uh, the months to recover in the top two lines there. Um, so in the internet bubble crash, we were down a quarter of uh, the S and P 500, and then it obviously it only took eight months to um, to recover the the that downturn for us uh, in the convertible space. Uh, there were some other um, equity substitutes, such as long short equity, low vol equity, that had similar time frames, but we were the converts were the quickest to recover in that time. Same thing in 2008, which is starting to look more. Uh, it's it's certainly a little different in terms of the companies involved, but the the trading activity of 2008 is certainly starting to be what we're seeing more of in the last few weeks. Um, and so while while we were down 40% um, from from top to bottom from 07 to 09, uh, converts were, we were the quickest to recover of all the equity substitutes, and certainly certainly recovered back to um, back to even significantly faster than than U.S. equities did. Um, and then again, if you look down to the next line, post crisis return, um, with the exception of low vol equity, certainly other the other cases. Um, the other equity substitutes we have significantly outperformed since 2009, and really, you know, low vol equity has had a great run. Um, but I think one of the things that, even in the context of that great run, if you look back at, at the credit crisis, um, you'll see that you know we significant we got back to even on much quicker than low vol equity did. So our performance, our snapback performance out of the crash uh, in 2008. Was significantly faster than than um, some of the other others in equities that have done well. So this is this is where we we hope to um, perform going forward as well. Um, so if you look at the breakdown of of the recent market crash, um, you know we've held up better than than equities certainly and and um, low vol equity as well. Um, and then looking forward. Um, we're starting to see some of the signs that that strike us similarly to 2008, where you're seeing converts that are trading significantly lower than where they should be um, in any sort of realistic scenario going forward. So there's there's a lot of opportunity out there for us in the convertible space, um, and we think that as as the market starts to become more certain and and have a better understanding of what what this looks like in a month or two, um, we think that a lot of these converts where they're trading today um, will look like incredible purchases, um, certainly six months to a year from now. Um, so we're, we're, we're actively looking through the convertible market and looking through our portfolio holdings and, and we think there's a lot of opportunity there um, to sort of replicate this slide with another, another line going forward where um, hopefully the months to recover are, are again, um, disproportionately better for converts than they have been for other uh, others like equities and long short equity or uh, low vol equity rather. So uh, breaking down the convertible securities universe, like I said, there's been a lot of issuance in um, the computer uh, or in software space, in healthcare, uh, certainly healthcare, some of the names in the healthcare space um, have done very well through this, through this downturn. Uh, you've got, um, President Trump talking about telehealth. Uh, Teladoc has been a big issuer in the convertible space, um, so that's been that's been obviously a positive performer through this downturn. And then I think, regardless of that, though, I think you've got like I said, there's a lot of opportunity out there, um, and it's a fairly well diversified space. So um, 
one of the things that we've compared it to, or we we see uh, a lot of people think about it in the context of, you know, the convertible sp the convertible market is only 215 billion outstanding. It's a significantly smaller market than the high yield market, um, but um, we've found the liquidity of the convertible market, and Barclays has found the liquidity of the convertible market to be um, better on a on a turnover basis than than the high yield space. And we've also tend to have a lower default rate than than high yield uh, certainly has been the case was the case in 2009 in 2019 um, you know going forward i think i think there's still like i said there's a lot of opportunity in the convertible space um, we see plenty of issues that are available to us um, at attractive at attractive prices so um, i'm not particularly concerned about um, looking forward where we'll where we'll be in um, you know, a year from now, I think, I think we'll be um, pleasantly surprised by some of the prices we were able to achieve today. Um, so if we can go to the next slide, Chris. Um, so um, how do we break down the convertible market? So I talked about uh, converts being a little bit more equity sensitive uh, as they move higher. Um, so we look at the bucket, we look at the convertible market in, in three different ways. There's equity surrogates, total return, and fixed income equivalent. So we're seeing a lot more convertibles, obviously, that have moved lower that are now sort of fixed income equivalent. Um, but it's it's very interesting because now they're fixed income equivalent, but they have essentially a free option to the upside where you can get into a convertible that looks attractive today purely from a fixed income standpoint. And as the markets rebound, you're gonna see equity participation to the upside. So it's a really attractive, it's a really attractive space to be in right now. We've always looked at the world from a total return perspective, um, where we're looking at converts that that have sort of an asymmetrical return profile where you're getting more equity upside than downside. And I think that that's still going forward, that's a very attractive place to be. Um, but I think you know some of some of the converts in the, in our space are skewing a little bit more fixed income equivalent, but they they will see more equity upside. So it's it's kind of on the verge of, of fixed income and total return. And then equity surrogate. I mean, the nice thing about equity surrogates is you're you're usually picking up a yield advantage over the common stock. So um, if you do feel if we do feel very comfortable owning an equity. Um, from a, on a fundamental standpoint, and we think the equity is undervalued, being in an equity surrogate often allows for a yield advantage over that underlying common stock. Um, so there's three different ways to look at the convertible market. We are generally focused on the total return space, um, but we definitely look at both sides on the equity and, and fixed income space as well. Um, so you're getting, uh, it's a nice diverse port. We can build a diverse portfolio with, with growth exposure and downside protection. Um, definitely converts skew to be a little bit more growth like um, and um, so convert skew to be a little bit more growth growth oriented on their underlying common stocks um, but you're moving higher in the capital structure picking up a yield advantage on those on those growth names uh, and you're getting uh, capital appreciation with the underlying stock moves um, I have some of the statistics here these uh, these statistics are slightly out of date on the bottom here um, like I said, as of last night, the, the average bond price in Teton was around 93. Um, so certainly we've seen, we've seen a lot of volatility um, and we've seen some opportunities to, to build uh, positions and names that we currently own and currently like that are, are trading significantly below, below par, um, which we think is a very attractive place to be adding to, to companies that we like. Um, so if we can move on to the next slide, Chris. So going back over 2019 seems like uh, ancient history uh, where we are today, um, but um, we saw significant new issuance in 2019. So it was the it was the highest year of new issuance since 2008. Um, we think this is this is this is great for us because it kept the market current, it kept the market healthy, and we have lots of opportunity that's available to us. And some of these issues are are now trading significantly below par. Um, where we thought that they were expensive last year, we did not participate in the issues at par, and now we have the opportunity perhaps to to buy into some of these issues in the 80s, um, sometimes even lower at the current in the current market, and um, so it's it's really attractive. One of the one of the problems we've run into in the past in in um, sort of more volatile markets 
in converts is that there hasn't been new issuance leading into that volatile market and we're sort of stuck with what what the market's been giving us but here we've had the opportunity to um the 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 portfolio the uh, the convertible market has grown and kept current and and given us a lot of opportunity near par which is the asymmetrical return profile that we like uh over the last year so that we've been able to um, in a lot of cases trade from equity sensitive converts to more total return converts last year uh, which has certainly helped us on the downside where we had much less equity sensitivity uh, over the last month than than we might have had we not had this opportunity from from recent issuance uh, if you look back over over relative performance one of the things um, chris if you can go back just real quick uh, one of the things that we've talked about is um, downside protection equity participation so in 2018 we saw a downside protection we were down um you know less than a quarter of the s p 500 2019 we participated in a large percentage of the s p move to uh to the upside uh so that's that's looking back looking forward so this year we've actually seen significant issuance year to date the the issuance has only dried up in the last two weeks um so so that issuance has continued uh we do anticipate that we will continue to see issuance perhaps not you know this week or in the next couple of weeks but um there will be issuance converts are often um used as a way for companies to finance uh, at a time like this because they have the opportunity you can go to the treasurer and tell the treasurer that they're going to be able to sell their stock 30 percent higher which is or 40 percent higher which is exciting for them because that's where they think that it should be valued um and then uh, we have the opportunity to invest in these in these companies, pick up a yield advantage um, at what are attractive values on the underlying equities. So um, we think issuance is going to return. If it doesn't, we have a lot of opportunity in the secondary market, um, and we think that we have a great opportunity to produce total returns in a volatile environment. So um, we move on to the next page. I can um, hit a couple of just a couple of highlights of sort of what I've been talking about. So Ring Central recently issued a convertible. Um, it was the last week in the last week in February. So this con this convert is three weeks old. Um, since they issued this convert, the stock's down thirty seven percent. The convert's down eighteen percent. Um, and um, so so the stock's down eighteen percent. So when they came, they were zeros up 50. It's not the most attractive convertible. It's not something that we were particularly excited about. Now they're fours up 100, which obviously the premium is a little bit too expensive, uh, or it's a little bit more expensive than we might care for, um, but you're getting a 4% yield to maturity on um, what is a great company with, with a tremendous growth opportunity that is really only highlighting, uh, really only being highlighted right now, like I said, people are working remotely. I think the customers of Ring Central are going to be able to work remotely better than the people who um, uh, don't have this sort of software um, available to them at this time. So fours up 100, it's, it's a really attractive yield to maturity. It's something that um, we think when the dust settles and Ring Central, when people realize that the growth opportunity for Ring Central is still massive, um, we'll we'll continue to see equity upside and it's a way to participate with what we see as as very little downside um and then uh another another company uh live nation that recently came with a convertible this year and they have multiple convertibles outstanding uh but since the recent convert came um the stock's down 66 percent of course who's going to go to a live event what is you know and it's very much a question of what does live nation's balance sheet look like well, the convert over that time is down only 25%. So you had significant downside protection relative to the common stock. And right now, if you're looking at the at the convert, um, you can get you can pick up an eight plus yield to maturity. There's there's actually multiple Live Nation converts. One is trading at eight a little over eight percent. The other is trading a little over ten percent. So um, these are situations where if you're if we're comfortable with the balance sheet in Live Nation, we we recognize that you know this is an unprecedented situation, but that people will go to live events again. It may be a circumstance where we can get paid to wait, as it were, where we're getting a, an eight to ten percent yield and eventually we'll see the equity upside when people realize that um, live events are not going to go away. And, and Live Nation's balance sheet um, is, is um, 
better equipped to handle this than uh, than some people are giving it credit for at the moment. Um, so uh, we can move on to the next slide. Uh, I do see the question here. There's a question here about repeating what, how the treasurer sees these as beneficial, and I'll, I will get to that in just a moment. Um, but just to conclude, um, so just to conclude here, there's a lot of opportunities in the convertible space. Um, we can manage risk and returns in ways that that bonds, stocks and bonds can't. So it's it's a great way to invest we, in, in both volatile markets, but in all markets. So um, it, we're looking at equities that are higher in the capital structure with reduced volatility because, and the reason you're getting reduced volatility is because you're getting a yield advantage over the common stock and you're getting maturity. So you know that in five years, you're getting your money back. Um, so there's, there's some limits to the downside. So it's, it's a great sort of model. It's a great sort of investment vehicle where you can inv participate in more of an underlying equities upside than its downside. Um, and, and right now we think is an even better opportunity um, than we've seen in a while. Uh, you know, I've certainly been waiting, I think since 2008 to see some of these, some, some of these opportunities in the convert space. Um, one of the, we hit on active management, we really, you know, the breakdown of our performance and our volatility relative to CWB, I think really, you know, kind of speaks for itself. Um, but like I said, unfortunately, CWB ends up getting too, too equity sensitive when it shouldn't be. Um, and sometimes the returns are driven far too much by, um, by single names in the convert universe that, that are not the asymmetrical return profile that you want them to be. Um, so, and really, I think from here, we have a, a great opportunity to, to achieve total return through, through income and capital appreciation. We can leave this up and I, I'll answer some questions and I'll start with, um, I'll start with the repeating uh, with uh, how the treasurer sees these as beneficial. So there's a, there's a number of reasons why the treasurer might find a convertible beneficial. So um, the first is what I, what I hit on before, which is um, you have the opportunity if you're the treasurer to uh, essentially issue equity with, with out diluting your shareholders until a higher level. So, you know, if a convertible comes, if, if, if a company is issuing a convert, let's say it's a 1% coupon and a 40% premium, they're able to, they're able to issue, they're able to not dilute their shareholders until uh, the stock price appreciates 40% higher. But on top of that, the way that most of these convertibles come, um, they're issued with a call structure underlying them where some of the, some of the assets that are raised through the convertible are, are used to, to do a call spread on top of it. So in, for example, Tesla, when they issued their convertibles, they were issuing their convertibles at what was effectively 100% premium. So if you were a shareholder of Tesla, you weren't getting diluted until the stock doubled from where the, the convertible was issued. Um, as a, as a holder, I don't see that. I, I'm only investing in something that has the payout structure of having a, a 30 to 40% premium. Um, but as, as a stockholder, as a stock owner, you would, you would see, you wouldn't see dilution until you got significantly higher, um, in, in the equity. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is in my example, I, I used an example of a 1% coupon. So a lot of these companies looking at high yields are looking at significant, you know, significantly higher coupons that they would have to pay in, in, in high yield. So, um, they're able to reduce interest costs push out dilution um, relative to an equity offering. So it can be, it can be very attractive. Um, there have been um, the, the, the tax, um, there are some, some positive tax consequences from the, uh, the 2017 tax, uh, tax law as well, um, where uh, by reducing interest costs, um, you inherently have the ability to um, uh, deduct more interest against your EBITDA because the, of the limits on uh, interest deduction relative to EBITDA that were imposed in that in that tax law. So, um, so there's, a, there's a few reasons why. Um, and also the nice thing about the convertible space is that there's multiple investors that are in it. So if a, an investment bank is going to a company and saying, well, we think that you should issue a convert and they can sort of, they can sort of structure it in a way that is 
what they are, what the company, what the treasurer is most comfortable with. Um, because we have, there's, there's us who are outright investors who are looking for, like I said, total return through a combination of income and capital appreciation. But there's also a mix of hedge fund investors who, who might be looking for slightly other, slightly different uh, metrics where they might be able to, if a company is really focused on keeping the interest rate low, but they don't care about dilution as much, for example, they might be able to get a lower rate, a lower coupon on the bond for, a, for using a lower premium um, where they're going to be, there be, might be more dilution or vice versa. If they don't care as much about their interest costs and um, but dilution is really important to them. Like I said, Tesla was able to issue converts that were with an effective 100% premium over, over where they were currently trading. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why we might, we might see, might be beneficial for, um, for customers. So Chris, are there any other, um, any other questions or you want to? Yeah, there are a few here. Um, we have Rich in Florida. He says he currently owns CWB. He's looking for some guidance on the sector. Uh, any, and any difference in securities? I know that you touched on this a little bit before, but sure. Um, like I said, uh, you know, Tesla is right now the largest, um, the largest security in CWB. Um, there's a couple of others. There's, you know, the top five in CWB and in our universe are, are Tesla. Microchip is very equity sensitive, very equity sensitive semiconductor name. Um, and then we also have um, uh, Bank of America preferred and the Wells Fargo preferred. So those are more yield, yield sensitive names. But um, the, the m focusing on Tesla and, and microchip, the point is, is that CWB ends up being inherently more volatile than um, than the underlying convertible universe. Uh, so that's one thing. The other, the second, the second point in terms of, um, us relative to CWB is that CWB is limited to converts that are over 350 million in, um, issue size. So there's a lot of convertibles that fall, that don't fall in what is CWB's world. And they're often some of the most attractively priced convertibles, um, Usually they're coming from slightly smaller companies, um, but that's really a way that we can sort of differentiate is that if we, you know, get to know these companies and really appreciate and really um, we can find companies in the space that have slightly smaller converts, uh, CWB doesn't own them. We can own them right now. Uh, the Teton Convertible Securities Fund um, has, we have a, a, about 50 million in, in assets under management, but the whole Gabelli team here, we have, uh, half a billion in, in assets under management. So we can, we can look at these from, from the sense of being a, a, a decent sized player on the street and converts um, and really, but really be looking at smaller converts in a way that makes a meaningful difference to our shareholders. Um, and that's something that, that we think is a real highlight of, of Teton and Gabelli convertibles just in general, that we have the opportunity to, um, invest in some of these smaller names and they're, they're getting overlooked by CWB and some other investors, you know, certainly the ones that are, you know, the larger investors out there in convert space. Great. Uh, another question, uh, what kind of changes have you made to the portfolio over the last few weeks, given the sell-off, if any, uh, and how will you continue to position the portfolio when we do start to see some type of recovery? So um, we have been, we've, we've, seen we've been able to make both buys and sells in the portfolio over the last couple of weeks um we've there are certainly like i said there's there's a number of software names that we think are trading at values where we will be um incredibly we'll be amazed that we were able to purchase them at the levels that they're trading at so we've, we've made some small some small purchases um just because we think that there's a great opportunity here um Generally, we're, we're still positioning the portfolio as we always have for total return, um, where we're going to see a mix of income and capital appreciation. And as we see, um, as, as, as we see sort of dislocations in the market and names that we're comfortable with, you know, we're looking at names where we, we're, we, we like the balance sheet. We know that, you know, that there might not, there's probably not an, an issue with debt for, for multiple years to come. Um, and we think that this is a temporary dislocation to, um, to revenues for, for certain companies. Um, those, those might be attractive companies for us to invest in. 
um, because we think, again, you know, in a year or two, as things have started to sort out, um, thing and the world starts to make sense again, um, having having the opportunity to invest in converts that are offering us significant yields to maturity, but also sort of a free option of equity to the upside um, will end up being really attractive. So there's a lot of really attractive opportunities here. Um, and then, you know, positioning for, for where we come out the other side. So one of the things I, and we didn't hit on it in the slide earlier, but um, for example, in, in 2009, our convertible convertibles were up almost 50%. Uh, that's relative to the S and P that was up about 25%. So not only, you know, we, we, we came out of it faster, but it, it also, we just, you know, you got that sort of credit Delta equity upside, um, even from positions that were more fixed income like, and, and we think that that's going to be an opportunity that presents itself again. And if, and if the nice thing about converts is if we're wrong in that, we still know that we're locking in a, a very attractive yield to yield to maturity. And we know that our returns over, over a certain time period are going to be something that we would be happy to have. Um, even if we don't see that, that equity, that equity upside. Great. Uh, another one, just going back to that slide in uh, when you're speaking about ring central, can you just explain the from zero up to 50? And yeah, <clears throat> sorry. Point? So that's, um, so zeros up 50. So zero. So initially when the ring central was issued, they were issued as a zero coupon with a 50% premium, which is not an attractive convertible. Um, it's not something that I that we necessarily would like to own because you're getting no yield from it and uh, your, your equity participation is limited. Now there is some benefit to it and I understand why people are happy, happy to have those convertibles issued because you're essentially de-risking your equity. So you're, you, you may only see, you know, 60% of the upside, but you're going to see, um, you know, a, a fraction of the downside. And even in this incredibly dislocated market, you, as I broke down the, um, the performance, you, you only participated in half the downside. So you could own exposure to ring central and you only had half the downside. Looking forward from here, when I said from zeros up 50 to fours up hundred right now, that that same convert that came as zeros a zero percent coupon with a four percent or a fifty percent um, premium is currently trading with a four percent over a four percent yield to maturity and a um, hundred percent premium to the equity. So it's much more bond like. You're basically getting a a, a little bit more than a four percent yield to maturity, which in a company that the only existing debt is a, a convertible that's very in the money and this convertible. Um, it's a great recurring revenue business. Um, they're growing at, uh, they have significant growth rate. So uh, we think those are things that'll all return. And like I said, I think, I think the, the benefit of owning or of uh, using Ring Central is something that is only gonna be seen more and more over the coming weeks as we're you know all working from home so it's a really interesting story uh and you're you're basically you know you're getting you know you're getting a four percent yield to maturity over the next five years um but there's also equity upside when things when things bounce back from there great that looks like all the questions we have james thank you very much for your time and your insight today uh, and we'd like to thank everyone for joining the call. In the next webcast of the Gabelli Funds Market Update Series on March 31st, we'll be joined by the co-portfolio managers of the Gabelli Utilities Fund to discuss the defensive nature of utility stocks. And then on April 7th, we'll be joined by the Gabelli Gold Fund Investment Team to highlight the opportunity in gold equities. Once again, we'd like to thank you for joining the webcast today and hope you have a great rest of your day. Investors should carefully consider the investment objectives, risk, charges and expenses of the fund before investing. The prospectus, which contains more complete information about this and other matters, should be read carefully before investing. To obtain a prospectus, please call 1-800-GABELLI or visit www.gabelli.com.